Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Paizo Twitch stream. We are going to be playing part two of the Doomsday Dawn adventure. That's part of the Pathfinder playtest today. Uh, we've got a great group of folks here. Uh, we are going to be going through the actual adventure, uh, which we're collecting feedback on right now. So if you're planning to play this with your home game, uh, we suggest that you maybe hold off on watching this stream, because there are going to be plenty of spoilers ahead. Uh, however, these are going to go up on YouTube pretty soon after, so if you want to play the game and come back and watch it later, you'll have that option available to you. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be playing with a party of fourth level characters, and I'm going to kind of go around the table and we'll introduce you to the players, and they will introduce their characters for this game. Uh, so, let's start with uh, Adam. Uh, tell, uh, tell everybody who you are, what you do at Paizo, uh, your character, and their name. All right. Uh, I'm Adam Daigle. I'm Managing Developer for Pathfinder. And today I am playing Ramona Avanth, who anyone who's played through Ruins of Aslan might recognize a uh, familiar NPC there. And this is a prequel to her career there. All right. And give us a quick re recap oh. of just your, your class and your... Uh, uh, yeah, she's a, a bard who was a scholar, um, really interested in tracking down weird lore and ancient lore. So that's how she started adventuring. Right. And Sam? Uh, I am Sam Phelan. I'm a customer service representative here at Paizo. Uh, I'm playing Fenra, who is a human barbarian. Uh, she has been raised by wolves and has uh, the uh, the wolf barbarian totem, and uh, is recently rejoining society after uh, mostly living it up as a wild animal. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Right. Uh, and over here with Andrew. I am Andrew White. I am a member of the tech team here at Paizo, and I am playing Marion Bosch. I am a half-orc alchemist who is l really looking forward to field testing some explosives. <laughs> nice. And Jason. I'm Jason Tondro. I'm part of the editorial team uh, here at Paizo. And, uh, and I'm playing Sebagar, uh, who is a sorcerer, human sorcerer, uh, who comes from a long line of uh, family adventurers, all of whom appear to be named Sebagar. <laughs> all right. My so. father's name is also Marion. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we get along. Mm -hmm. We have something in common. <laughs> All right, so the four of you have been uh, summoned to, with the promise of uh, some really good treasure, some a nice little bit of a cash inflow for performing a job. Uh, you've been uh, summoned to a town in the nation of Katapesh. Katapesh is kind of a, a merchant nation. Cash rules everything around you. And you've been brought to the town of Kelmoraine, which was uh, conquered and run by Knowles for some time, but has recently been freed. And they're kind of trying to rebuild the town, but everything's kind of still in disarray. As you arrive, there are kind of some uh, some work crews that are trying to repair like uh, broken buildings that have had their roofs destroyed, that have been you know inhabited by all kinds of kind of disgusting creatures for a while. And they're kind of slowly rebuilding at this point. Um, and they're trying to turn it kind of back into that kind of important trading post it used to be. Uh, you've been brought to uh, meet someone named Lady Kamisora Vord, um, which does not sound like the kind of name you usually see around these parts. So you're guessing she's probably from out of town. Mm -hmm. uh, and she is uh, in kind of this uh, rundown church. Uh, and as you approach the door, the, the, the four of you kind of uh, it sounds like you kind of know each other a mm -hmm. little bit from the past. Mm -hmm. um, there's someone waiting for you at the door there. So have you been traveling to town together, or are you kind of I just so. all yeah. came here from our last Probably, adventure. Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so you're kind of traveling along, having, you know, adventure kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a, a young man at the door who is uh, um, kind of uh, keeping watch for you. And so as you arrive, he kind of gestures to you and uh, kind of points into the center of the room. It's kind of this, this big empty church. It looks like you know there haven't been services here in who knows how long. Uh, and there's a set of stairs going down in the middle of the room. And he kind of <coughs> <coughs> You enter the distinguished presence of Lady Camisora Vord, first throne of the esoteric order of the Palatine Eye. My lady, your mercenaries have arrived. 
sounds like he's been rehearsing the speech for a while. Um, and you kind of hear a voice echo from down the stairs, just saying, uh, Calidus, I might remind you we are a secret society. <laughs> uh, but in any case, please please send them along. <coughs> Oops. <laughs> and they always use the word mercenaries. You know, there's so many better words that they could, well, okay, I guess it's apt. You prefer yeah. cell swords? Cell swords is up there. Mm. Yeah, um, swords. <laughs> uh-huh. Troubleshooters. That is a word, yes. Treasure finders. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of walking in, you, your footsteps are echoing through this kind of big uh, open uh, church and you find this kind of uh, narrow set of stairs and, and head down. Uh, Lady Kamasura Vord, uh, who looks kind of like this, uh, has her hair back in a long braid. Uh, she's sitting on a stool and kind of looking at this door there and kind of taking some notes on it. It has kind of runes on it, so it mm-hmm. looks like she's kind of studying it. Um, and she looks at the four of you and says, Ah, yes. The Order appreciates that you have uh, come to perform this task for us. Uh, We've been uh, studying a report from one of our agents, and we have realized time is of the essence, so I do not wait for more members of the Order. Uh, Instead, we have hired your services because we believe you can accomplish this task in time, Uh, whereas if we wait for reinforcements, uh, we do not think that can happen. Uh, I believe you all have the, the basics of my offer. Uh, and uh, your skill sets uh, will be needed to travel into the wilderness um, to an ancient tomb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a treasure that is of great importance to the Order, and it is under the, the volcano known as Pale Mountain. You have heard of it? Of no. course we have heard of it. Uh, yes. uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> How many volcanoes can there be around here? Watch there be many. But, uh, <laughs> I'm a yeah, bard. I've heard of everything. Say. Yeah, you're a bard. <laughs> You've heard of Pale Mountain. We assume that we'll just ask you later. Was it yeah. the, the big hill? Uh, With the fire out uh, coming out the you, top? You may say. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is, uh, there is a tomb there. The tomb of uh, is an ancient scholar named Tular Seft. My undead sense is ringing. <laughs> Uh, Seft uh, studied the elements and uh, we believe that his his resting place is uh, sort of a, a memorial to that research of his um, but we've also uh, heard of this this artifact that is uh, s- uh, secreted within but there is a group um, a group that is very dangerous they are called the night heralds uh, they have many of the same interests we do, but they pursue dark and uh, very dangerous ends, whereas we uh, pursue knowledge. And uh, Also, you are paying us, and they are not. <laughs> this is also true. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that you are uh, <laughs> down to brass tacks. Uh, there is a, a thing we know that they do not, although they did have a head start, which is that there is a secret back entrance to the tomb. Um, mm. The research of our ally Clary Deberan has revealed this fact. And uh, we believe that um, if you can get to this back entrance, they will have to uh, go to the main entrance. And there is a great labyrinth that we think is going to consume much of their time as they try to uh, reach the inner sanctum. Uh, this entrance, the back entrance, is in a scar across the side of the mountain. and. Uh, uh, we have prepared a map that we believe will take you to this location. So it's a race, then? Yes. Um, you do have some time, but uh, we do encourage you to, to move as quickly as you uh, can reasonably manage. I can outrun most people. <laughs> uh, the object in question, um, I should say, is a gemstone. There is a series of ancient uh, Osiriani hieroglyphics that appear across its surface. Um, they represent a number that appears to be counting down. Uh, this is what we want you to collect. Uh, we know it is hidden in Tular Sef's tomb, or at least we have very strong reason to believe so. Uh, we do not know the exact location. Uh, so we will trust you to to find where it is hidden and, uh, and retrieve it for us. Um, any other treasures you find in this tomb, uh, per our contract, will be yours to keep. Uh, though if any of them are in, of particular interest to the order, uh, I will see about perhaps offering you some money for those if you do not uh, want to uh, keep them for yourselves. 
do you have any questions about the task I set before you? That uh, seems fairly straightforward. What's What's the artifact we're looking for again? Uh, the artifact uh, is a gemstone. Okay. Right. Um, there are hieroglyphics within. It will be. You will <sighs> definitely recognize it if you see it. It's just uh, a mysterious object that's counting down for some reason. Right. Yeah. Yes, and getting to the bottom of that is is uh, why we want to secure it, and we believe the night heralds. Uh, know enough about it that they could use it for nefarious means if they were to collect it. We don't know what will happen when the countdown reaches zero. Uh, we believe there is still quite some time before that, yes. But, uh, but without having the artifact in hand, it is hard to be sure. Go to mountain, get shiny rock, keep everything else. You forgot, yeah. you forgot to kill everybody between us and the object. Assumed, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Yes, and uh, if you encounter the Night Heralds, um, they are quite dangerous people. It is most important to us that you return the object to us. Uh, but if the Night Heralds have it in their hands, we do expect you to uh, retrieve it from them uh, or do your best to, to try. Uh, uh, because the, it would be very bad for all of us if they were to acquire it and keep it. So the, these Night Heralds, um, do they <coughs> use any sort of symbolism or anything that would be able to identify them on site? Uh, to identify them on site, they are uh, quite secretive. I doubt they would uh, do anything like that. Uh, That's what I figured, but... When there's, doubt. There's, a, uh, there's a long stare that they will give. You will see a deadness uh, <laughs> in their eyes. All right. But no pictures. Gotcha. So just to be safe, if we run into anybody else at the pyramid, Probably. We don't have to murder everyone. I didn't say murder. <laughs> but you meant it. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. I, I trust you will uh, take care of our interests in this matter. Um, and Commodus can, uh, will arrange for the map for you to travel with and some mounts to speed your journey. Excellent. I guess I do have one question. Oh, how yes. Exactly how secret is this, uh, this operation here? Uh, well, it, please refrain from telling anyone, though most people would have no idea what to do with the information if they even had it. Uh, but Night Herald agents could be anywhere. Uh, there are a very small group, but we try to keep things as quiet as possible. Okay. Well, they'll probably be smaller soon. <laughs> I, I hope that is true. Because we're going to kill him. Oh, yes. She knew that. Yeah. yeah. What, what <laughs> you must do in the course of executing your duties is uh, none of my business. Although she did say executing. Yeah, so. she did. <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> Understood. Uh, uh, execute. It's mm. one too many syllables for her. Right. Mm. I'll stick with two and below. <laughs> uh, so as you're heading out, uh, Camadus kind of uh, hands you um, this scroll with a map in it. Uh, and s takes you over to kind of a, a stand where they've kind of rented some camels for your journey. And uh, he says, uh, I wish you great speed and insight on your course. You are going to earn a good name within the order if you can complete this task, and that is a reward greater than any coin, whether you believe it so or not. Uh, I, <laughs> I hope to see you again soon. Uh, and all glory to the order. Uh, and then he says a, a kind of strange phrase. Do any of you speak uh, Osiriani or ancient is Osiriani? Roland it is. Okay. Uh, you recognize uh, that he said, seek and you shall find. We did agree to a flat sum in terms of reward, right? I believe so. Beforehand? Okay. I yes. wonder if we can seek some horses instead of camels. I don't like camels. Uh, you can you can ask right. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Just I just need something to complain about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just seven. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So as you kind of uh, travel out from uh, from Kelmoraine, you take this kind of long uh, uh, journey, which takes you across kind of um, this old abandoned road that hasn't been uh, used in some time. Um, and for the folks watching at home, I just want to mention we are kind of uh, 
abbreviating this adventure somewhat so we can fit it into two sessions. So there are going to be some parts of this where I kind of speed through some of the, the travel or skip over some encounters. That's just kind of a part of uh, adapting it for the stream. Uh, so for your own games, um, you might see some stuff that you, you don't see in this adventure. Um, but that's, that's just kind of a, a part of the nature of this game. So uh, you kind of travel um, for several days. It takes you about five days um, journey to get to kind of the foothills leading up to Pale Mountain. Pale Mountain is this towering white mountain, a dormant volcano. Uh, and kind of as you're approaching, you can just see like the sun glinting off it every day. You always know exactly which direction you're headed because you can see this bright white mountain off in the distance. Um, and as you get close, uh, you kind of get to this scrubby brush land and realize the you're going to have to leave your camels behind. It's kind of too difficult to traverse for them. Um, so as you're kind of heading kind of slowly uphill, you pass through these um, these scrublands, and then you get to this uh, this big kind of uh, sandy plain. There there are these kind of mountains, or sorry, there are these uh, heading down from the mountains are these rivers. Um, kind of uh, coming out on each side of, of your course. And this is kind of some packed sand kind of in between these, and you're kind of trekking across that. Um, so what are what is your kind of general approach to this travel as you're kind of heading into the mountains? I'll take point. OK. Well, then Fenra should be close behind you. Yep. All right. Yep. She's the muscle. Are you riding on your camel? And resist, uh, re resisting we, we, the urge to eat it? Well, yeah, we left that behind. It'll it's spending for itself now. All right. So, yeah. uh, pretty sure I can bound up these rocks way better anyway. Probably. When I think of camels, I don't think of jumping. Yeah, yeah I'm so trained in survival, survival and nature, so I figured being up front great probably makes okay. sense. Are we traveling across sand? In general? Yeah, this is kind of like flat, kind of sandy ways. It's kind of gently sloping uphill, but it's kind of. Um, so if anybody else had been around here any time recently, yeah, you'd probably see some tracks. Okay, and we don't you, see you, any. You see, you see like some small animal tracks, but that's about it. Okay. I'm like sniffing around like a distracted dog. <laughs> like, okay. uh, you're sniffing around. Uh, I'm going to roll you a secret perception check. So because it's perception uh, in Pathfinder 2, there are secret checks, which I'm going to roll because if you roll a one on the die, you kind of have an idea how things went. So the secret check kind of means that we can keep a little more mystery in it. So <laughs> um, you're kind of uh, kind of sniffing around and, and looking around, and you notice something um, kind of this kind of flat uh, wasteland. Uh, you notice this kind of low mound, um, and so you're kind of out here in the waste. Uh, go ahead and kind of put yourselves all together. You're kind of approaching from this direction. Uh, these are actually just some, some sure. ruins that are kind of sunken into the sand. It looks like something was built here a really long time ago. Um, but it's just kind of, it is just sunk into the sand over years and years. Kind of um, looks like she's going to just dig up a gopher or something. <laughs> 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 All right, so you're kind of uh, looking around here, and you see this kind of low mound uh, over here. Um, that looks a little bit out of place. Do I know of any critters that might do mound? Uh, what is your survival bonus? Uh, my survival bonus is plus four. Uh, or your nature. Um, they're both the same. All right. Yes, that does look familiar. Uh, you know that is the uh, the nesting mound of an oncrov, which is kind of a a big. Um, kind of insectoid creature that uh, can uh, spit acid. Hmm. Acid spitting uh, burrow bug yeah. is, yeah. Interesting. Often make those things. Yeah. Uh, and you know that uh, they're pretty strong, they're acidic, uh, and their bite can punch through armor. Oh, that's fun. This could be a chance for you to test your acid <coughs> bombs against uh, insect carapace. Yeah, or just harvest its or acid glands for future use. See, that's why you're the smart one. Yeah, I am pretty <laughs> smart. Uh, or we could do the real smart thing would just be to stay away from it uh, and yeah. not get involved. Because generally these things, actually what am I saying? I don't know anything about giant bugs. I'm just going <laughs> to assume 
that if you don't go near them, they don't attack you. We that can, would probably be the safe, uh, you know. You know that is not a safe assumption. Oh, because they can burrow. They're over. they're very hungry and and pretty aggressive. Yeah, they're they're mean. I'll draw my rapier. Okay. Uh, Does that mean it's in the ground below us? That's right. Uh, then it's, it is below us. Yeah, down you do there? know it can burrow, so. Um, it is probably uh, in the ground somewhere nearby. Usually they stay pretty close to their mounds, but you don't know 100% where it is. Ugh. Do you want to go over so there and try and dig it out? Oh, I don't like acid on me. So now or that we well, well, I got some bad news <laughs> for you. Now that you have kind of paused to assess the situation and you aren't kind of, you know, you know, blithely wandering into its territory, uh, it, is, it is since it is time to spring on its prey. Uh-oh. Uh, so uh, we're going to roll initiative. Um, you all are going to be rolling perception, and it's going to be rolling its stealth because it was uh, it's still kind of underground and trying to hide from you. So, uh, let's start with uh, Fenra. What did you get? Eleven. Eleven. How about Ramona? Eighteen. Eighteen. All right. How about Sebagar? Also eighteen, but I'm happy to let Ramona go first. Okay. And Marion? Seventeen. Seventeen. Which I thought was impressive, but... Go ahead and let Sebagar go first. Um, we're actually, uh, because uh, Ramona um, had kind of identified this so well, uh, you know a lot about their tactics. I'm actually giving you a plus two circumstance oh. bonus to your initiative. Well, look at uh, there. So you are going to go first, um, and you have, it has not emerged from the ground yet, uh, but you have spotted that it is right over here. It's pretty big, so it's kind of like okay. those four squares there. Um, could I use, could I just attack that square with like telekinetic projectile? You can. Okay. Um, so just a quick uh, recap of the basics of the rules for uh, the folks watching the stream. So on your turn, you're going to get three actions, and each round you get one action, or one reaction rather. So with your three actions, you can move, you can make an attack, you can make three attacks. You can pull things out of your backpack. Whatever you need to do, each of those actions is going to let you do one thing. When you're casting a spell, you're providing the components for that spell, the gestures, the vocalizations, the material uh, sacrifices. Uh, and so your telekinetic projectile, I believe, uses two actions. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so uh, Ramona is going to be casting that spell and flinging uh, kind of a rock or a piece of rubble toward this. You were saying here ish. Yeah, that's right. All right, so I'm gonna I'm going to actually take my first action. Um, my first action is going to be to move, but keeping that within the thirty foot range. Okay. Um, and then two actions for a telekinetic projectile. All right. Um, so it is a little bit under the surface, so I'm going to give it cover from sure. your attack. Um, I hit uh, an AC of twenty four. Uh, twenty four. That is going to be a hit, even with the cover. Wah, wah. Um, one point. One point. Um, probably bludgeoning. Yeah, all right. So a rock kind of goes flying. It punctures into the, the sand, and you kind of hear a clack. Yeah. Mm. And then something rises. Excellent. Out from under the sand. You can't kill it. I don't know if you don't mind up. setting that and that. Gotta know what I'm hitting. Uh, ah, no, there. Yeah, turn it, oh, that's turn a big thing to hit. It's gonna come get you. There we go. Uh, turn its butt to the camera there. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So it rises up, um, and the first thing it does is pop open its mandibles and oh no. flings uh, a globule of acid <laughs> through the air. Uh, and you're the the nearest one, so that's coming at you. Uh, and you are, uh, I know you are within 30 feet because you yep. explicitly said so. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> or I wouldn't have been able to do this. This comes thing. flying at you. And does a 20 hit your touch AC? 
Yes, it does. All right. Uh, you take seven acid damage. Oof. All right. Uh, and then... Uh, it it? Kind of, yeah. It actually, when it burrowed up, it can kind of come a little closer. Okay. So we're going to say it came out there. There? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, its second action was that attack. Um, and then, now that it sees uh, that it has burned you a little bit, um, it actually goes, and the spray of acid Ugh. just splashes out over the three of you. Uh, you you are not in it, uh, but the rest of you get in this huge acid spray. Uh, actually, let me see here. It's a line. What did I it's just a, say about acid? Cone. Oh. Uh, I hope it's not using all its acid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just barely in it. Okay, so I need all of you to give me reflex saves. Oh, that's a good Oh, no. Uh, 16. Okay, that is a failure. Nine. That is a failure, but not a critical failure. 23, <laughs> 23 and that's a success. Okay. Uh, so if you got a success, you'll take half the damage amount I'm about to give you. Uh, if you failed, you take the full amount, and nobody critically failed. So uh, 11 damage and 5 for Sebagar. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, that is the creature's turn. And next up is Sepigar. Uh, so this thing is kind of like big and uh, has this thick carapace, yeah. um, and it just looks extremely hungry. You, you don't know a whole lot about the motivations of kind of insecty creatures, but you can tell hunger when you see it. So is it within? Looks like it's with barely within thirty feet of me. Uh, y yes, it I is exactly within thirty feet. Then I will. Um, Sepigar will call upon one of his ancestors. Uh, maybe Sebagar the Mighty, okay. and uh, conjure a flaming sphere in its square. Okay. All right. So Ancestral Surge is one action, and I think the spell is the other two actions. Yeah. All right. Uh, so is that a save? Uh, it is. Let me, I actually have it here. Hold on. Um, flaming sphere. Yeah, it's going to have to save, but it's got. Pl but I get plus one on the save DC because of Ancestral Surge. All right. Okay, so this uh, this ball of fire kind of erupts uh, next to the creature, uh, and it is uh, uh, kind of trying to dodge out of the way of it. Let's see how it does. Uh, what's your DC for I your I believe spells? it would, would normally would be 18, so okay, plus so one would be 19. Right now. Uh, all right. It succeeded at its save. Okay. Uh, does it take half damage? It uh, succeeds unaffected. Okay. All right, so it has dodged your sphere, sphere for now, but you're going to be able to keep that up, concentrate yep. on it with an action to move it around. Um, so those of you who got uh, sprayed by the acid, um, you also are still burning with acid. So you're taking persistent acid damage. Um, so oops, so Sebagar, yeah. uh, at the end of your turn, you need to give me a flat check, which is just a d20 roll with no modifiers, to see if that acid stops burning you or if you take some acid damage. Does it? Does it? Okay. Roll to 20. Roll to 20? Roll to 20. All right. The acid, uh, you managed to just kind of uh, wash it off yourself. Okay. Cool. Probably uh, Sebagar the Mighty working through you. <laughs> might, have been, <laughs> might have been Sebagar the Clean. We, oh, have, uh, we have a lot of Sebagars in the family. Yeah. <laughs> Sebagar the Mighty, the Not So Mighty, the Almost Mighty. Uh, all right, Marion, it is your turn. Well, I was hoping uh, to observe how it would react to being set on fire by mm -hmm. your spell. Um, it's, it reacted very sturdily. Yeah, well, yeah. It. So uh, I'm going to have to try and create my own set of scenarios here. <laughs> and uh, Marion will reach, uh, pull a uh, small clay ball off of the bandolier he's wearing under his cloak okay. and chuck it at the thing. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me an attack roll for that. All right. That is a 21. All right, that's 21 against its TAC. That mm -hmm. is a hit. Ha <laughs> ha! So, that does 2d8 damage. Uh, which is not, not, should be higher than that, but isn't. Uh, that is four damage. All right. Um, and two persistent. Okay, that's two persistent fire. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Now everybody's burning and melting except for <laughs> <laughs> except for this side of the table. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, how many actions was that? That was just one action. All right. I'm tempted to just throw another one. But let's see. Yeah, why not? All right. I'll throw another one. Um, taking a negative five. Right. So, not going to happen. Okay. So the other one kind of falls into the sand and uh, splashes harmlessly. It makes, makes a little bit of glass. Um, I, th I believe on a, f on a failure, it still does oh, splash you, you damage. Did, uh, you failed, but you didn't critically fail. All right, right. yeah, it does. So that would be... Kind of pops a little burst of fire. That would be four fire damage. All right. Okay, it looks like it burns just like uh, you'd expect. Yep. So experiment successful. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yep, they burn. Yeah. Does it does it appear to like being burned or? Oh, really. okay. <laughs> it, it seems slightly. Annoyed. This is important to you. Yeah. Well, but you it, you haven't. Uh, I got to uh, chase it off its meal yet. All right. I got to write this like down in the report it. later. So. <laughs> and all right, that is it for Marion. So Fenra, you are up. All oh, right. Uh, well, I'm gonna run up and I'm gonna try to whack it. All right. So come up there. Okay. And. Uh, I'm gonna swing my greatsword and smack its insecty body. Okay. Do you want to rage or are you going to stay unraged? Oh yes, I would love to rage. Okay. I would love to use right. that as one of my. So actions. one of your actions is to yep. enter your rage, so you get uh, bigger and nastier and stronger. And uh, what does it look like as you uh, enter your rage? To enter the rage, the uh, very wolf-like aspects begin to come out. It's uh, the the hair starts to spread from the head down the back nice. a little bit, and the the mouth gapes open, and there's obvious canine things, right. and uh, it's hunched over and gape or leaps toward. All right, that's our the final. enemy. The howl incoming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like that's part of the getting into the rage. Yeah. What's that saying? Uh, all right. Uh, that'll be a 23. That is a hit. Okay. All right, so you are you tearing into it with your claws? Uh, I am just swinging the great sword. <laughs> I am just, yep, ran it down on it, and that'll be uh, 12 plus 2 from the rage will be 14. Nice. Right. Nice. Do you have claws right, so in addition to the great sword? Uh, no, I don't believe it. Gives me, okay. It gives me an intense bite, but not claws. All right, so huh. you, you chop into it, and uh, one of its legs goes flying off into the sand, and it kind of recoils as it's uh, been pretty, pretty strongly hit there. Uh, Ramona, we're back to you. All right. Um, oh, uh, actually, sorry, one more thing. Uh, you have persistent acid damage, so you need to give me a oh, 20 right. roll. 14. 14. Uh, all right, you have not recovered from the acid, so you take one acid damage. Really just, hate this just thing. Just a tiny bit. A little sting. All right, how about Ramona? Um, I'm going to, since we have, you know, with the barbarian up front, mm -hmm. I'm going to cast Forbidding Ward on her um, using two of my actions, so you get a plus one conditional bonus to armor class. Um, and then I'm also going to inspire courage for everybody. Sweet. You get a plus one bonus to attack rolls, damage rolls, and saves against fear. Ooh, nice. All right. Uh, and what does your bardic performance look like? It's more like, like oratory. You know, I'm okay. kind of like, give good us, job, guys. Give us are doing yeah. great. All right. <laughs> we can take this. You know, I mean, some of us are hurt a little bit, but we've got this. We've got this. The howl a second time. Yeah. She didn't right. understand a word you just said. No, there's energy no, here, and I love that's it. That's energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, beast uh, tries to bite you, Fenra. Uh, oh, that ain't good. It gets a 28. Ow. Oh, it'll hit. Uh, does it critically hit? Uh, no. Okay. Not quite. All right. Cool. So. Bidding ward. <laughs> It does uh, 10 damage to you from its uh, mandibles piercing into you. Uh, and they are coated in acid. Uh, so you also take are. one acid damage. Okay. Um, and then it burrows back down under the sand. Mm. 
and you kind of see it kind of, you uh, see the sand kind of move around. I was afraid it was uh, going to do that. That can't be good for it keeping it on fire. We emerge. I can move the fire around. Yeah. Back Over. where it was? Uh, let's see. Let me see how far I can move here because it was starting out there. Uh, like five feet further. There we go. Yeah. It's about how far I can get. Uh, and it kind of comes back out and it's kind of sizing you up and it looks like it's getting ready to start spitting acid again. Oh, fun. Um, Sebagar. I need an action to concentrate on the yep. flaming sphere, right? Mm -hmm. But when I do that, I can also move the sphere. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move the sphere to follow it. Okay. All right. So it's a DC 19 reflex set. Do you want to use this to like indicate your... Uh, it's, it fills, it's, it's in its oh, square. It's, it is continuing to evade your flames. Okay. Then I'm going to move up. All right. Is this you? Yes. I'm going to move up to behind you, actually 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to there. And I'm going to cast Magic Weapon on her greatsword. Uh, oh. I think you, oh, you're I think right. You're, you're absolutely, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have an action for that. Um, then I'll just move again. All right. Uh, or no, I take that back. I'm going to cast Shield. Okay. Oh, so you, you raise a Shield of Force? Yeah. Just uh, in case. To protect yourself. Yeah. Okay. Marion. Um, is it still on fire, or did submerging itself in the sand put those fire put uh, that fire it out? Did, I don't believe it did put it out. Um, so the way persistent damage works is it's a DC twenty on your flat check to recover from it. Mm -hmm. If you've done something to kind of help you against it, it reduces the DC to fifteen. Okay. So going under uh, the sands reduces it to fifteen, but it is still burning. It's kind of got some alchemical jelly on it that's just still flaming. It's like okay, uh, like a, what are those called? The little Pots. Sterno. Sterno, yeah. When, for those of us that have acid, can we do that as well? Can we like take an action to sort of yep, get the acid can. off? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Well, let's try something else. Um, I will take an action to completely coincidentally move away from the rest of the group. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, how far away is that thing now? So that would be more than one range increment away if I was going to try yeah. and throw another flask at it, which is what kind of penalty? Uh, it'd be a minus two penalty. Okay. Uh, it's untyped, so it, it stacks with everything else. Uh, well, what the hell? Hmm. Let's try it. See if I can uh, make it more on fire than it already was. Um, that would be, with the negative one penalty, a 19. 19? Uh... It's a negative two penalty. Oh, sorry. With the negative two penalty, it's still a nineteen. Oh, okay. Uh, yep, yeah, that's a hit. Awesome. So let's see if I can actually roll decently this time. You can do it. Um, oh wait, actually, it would have been even more because I forgot about the bonus. Um, so that is a two d eight, um, seven fire damage plus right. two more persistent fire. Okay. And it smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Probably does too. Uh, it is badly burned, uh, and we are back to Fenra. Uh, no, you don't. I'm gonna <laughs> do a sudden charge. Okay. Nice. Um, to move double my uh, speed, which should bring me Kay. up to it. It should. Easily. But when you get to about there, yep. Uh, you sink into the ground. And you are <sighs> up to your waist in sand. Well, oh no! Uh, and your charge has been interrupted. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a two two action activity. You have one action left, and you are partially submerged in the sand. And you can just see it around you. It does not look very stable. Uh, I would like to try and uh, scramble out backward. Okay. Get out of here. Um, so this is, uh, for the folks watching at home, this is a complex trap of a uh, quicksand pit. And so I'm going to roll initiative to for it because complex traps add themselves into initiative. So, uh, all right, so you still have your, your action to try and scramble out. So uh, you are going to need to give me an athletics check to try to swim um, to, uh, to try to move. Uh, you, you only get to move five feet when you swim okay. through quicksand. Uh, that'll be an 11. 
Uh, that is not enough. You are still stuck in the quicksand. I don't think I've ever swam in sand before. <laughs> uh, and the quicksand uh, kind of bubbles and starts uh, pulling you down. Uh, uh, uh. Guys? Yeah. Uh, so you are submerged up to your waist. Now you're submerged up to your neck. Okay. I uh, think that's my turn. <laughs> is, that, is that the path that the thing burrowed along that she... Uh, uh, it, it probably went under it. Okay. So it, or around it. You, you can't really see it and tell its exact path. Well, no, it, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to determine, did it create that or was oh, that... It, it seemed like it was just using kind of something that was naturally there. Okay. This doesn't, yeah, you don't think it was made by the creature. Uh, okay. And Ramona. Well, just don't sink anymore and you'll be fine. Could I get out my rope and throw it to her? Would that be helpful at all? Um, yeah, you can you can do that. Okay. <coughs> Does this look um, like something that? Are, are you gonna hold on to it so you can kind of? Yeah, yeah. Help her out. So I'll take an action to take it out, and an action to throw it over there. Okay. Um, I guess uh, it'll, yeah, it would help if you get closer to. Yeah, I'll so you move up a little more. Be about there. All right. Okay, so you have kind of tossed a rope, and you you know it's. It's kind of in the the uh, sand, and you know if you can get an arm up, you'll be able can to. Can I take my it. big wolf teeth and clamp on it? <laughs> 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 yeah, you absolutely can. Uh, and it is now uh, the Ankrov's turn, um, and it starts spitting acid at you. Oh, fun! Don't spit on me. Oh, and uh, did you? Um, you were taking the persistent damage. Oh, um, so uh, go ahead and roll a flat yes. check for that. Because you are submerged in, in wet sand. sand scoured okay. off. Uh, you recovered from it. Uh, and I need you to do that as well if you haven't recovered yet. Uh, no. Uh, I need you to scrape off yourself if you could just hang on to that for me. Oh, okay. I'd really appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, the acid spit uh, is a 13 against your TAC. What did I take for my persistent? Oh, uh, you took. Uh, four acid Ouch. damage from that. Uh, and a half. Um, what was now? What was the spit you were trying uh, to? Thirteen. Thirteen. Will your TAC. That will miss. Right. Um, it spits again at you. Um, and misses. Uh, and then it uh, kind of burrows into the ground, and you can see it looks like it's kind of it kind of turns tail. Mm -hmm. And then kind of burrows into the ground. Okay. Um, you're guessing that it's probably retreating because it looks pretty badly injured. So it was trying to get you in the last months, but now you think um, unless you pursue it, it's probably just going to make a run for it. All right. Looks like it's getting out of here. So if you'll pull that off the map since it's <laughs> underground at the moment. So it's somewhere nearby there, um, but you haven't exactly pinpointed its location. Sebagar. Does Fenris' situation look like something that climbing would be able to get her out of? Um, swimming. Okay. All right. Swimming in the earth. Yeah. So okay. not expecting that to come up in the desert. But mm. uh, <laughs> um, no. I think I'll just help out with the rope. Because you've thrown a rope yeah. already. Can I do an aid, another action to like help her swim um, or something? Can I reach out an arm? So you, you can kind of pull on the rope. Okay. Let's you do, just do that. You could help help Ramona pull. Uh, all right. So uh, give me an athletics check for that. Yeah, sure. Um. Where's my athletic? Twelve. Twelve. Um, you don't think that you're helping much, but you aren't okay. actively harming the, okay. the efforts either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start off for that. Here, <laughs> get up! Moral <laughs> support you're providing. And, and you moved and you uh, pulled on the rope. That's correct. Uh, so with your last action, do you want to continue to concentrate on the sphere? If not, you can try to assist uh, one more time. Uh, I'll. Uh, oh, if I can... I, it looks like it's, you said it's retreating. Yeah. I'll just try to assist again. Okay. We'll let the spell... Right, so your, your, your sphere kind of snuffs out. But I didn't roll very well, so... Okay. Uh, all right, so you're kind of trying to pull on this, but the quicksand seems to have a pretty good grip on Fenra. Right. Uh, Marion. Uh, there's a lot of things I can throw, but none that would really help you out in this situation. Um, did you say that is its burrow? Or no, uh, it, yeah, or is that it, just it tucked nest, down yeah. and started going that way? Okay, but but yeah, when, the, you, when the, you originally the identified the, map, the dome, yeah, the, right, uh, right, that's mountain. its nest. Okay, so. It might be fleeing to its nest, or it might be fleeing somewhere else and just set up another nest somewhere else. Um, 
How 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 um, do they seem to be doing all right as far as pulling her out of the sand? Um, <laughs> they don't seem to be doing great. All right, fine. I guess I'll help out here. <laughs> a big strong half orc. Yeah. So I'll move over there and I'll uh, try and all right, give us an athletics check. Okay. I'm uh, trying to haul that rope in. Uh, fifteen. Uh, fifteen. Um. It's on here. Uh, all right, that uh, is going to be sufficient to give you a plus two on your athletics check to swim out um, with with the rope helping out. Glad uh, one of us brought rope. That was uh, uh, so that's good of thinking. Gotta be which is now your turn <laughs> if you want to try to escape the quicksand. Yeah. I'm before you get sucked under. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> 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 you have three actions here. You're going to get more chances. <laughs> this one Sweet, because that's a three plus the nine, twelve plus two, is fourteen. Fourteen's not going to be enough. But no. fortunately, you're good at that athletics, so you're not accidentally pulling yourself no, deeper. No. So that's that's yeah. a good. All right. Let's. You got two more actions. Two more chances. Uh, that one will be eighteen. All right, you pull yourself out and onto the uh, onto the solider sand. So let's go ahead and move about five <laughs> feet there. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, you pulled yourself. You're still in the quicksand, but you're back up to your waist. So you're kind of leaning out over, <laughs> still holding out this rope. You've got one action left. All right, I got it. My teeth and in both hands. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that one will be a lot better. That'll be all right. 26. Okay, that'll do it. You get out of the quicksand now. Woohoo! Uh, so, uh, unless anybody really wants to go back into the quicksand. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys, that is a bad idea. That did not go well. Yeah. That did uh, not work. It could have gone worse. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So, we are going to go uh, <laughs> out of the encounter now. Um, you are. Uh, so, there's kind of the den over there. The It looks like the Ankrav has, has booked it. It doesn't kind of show its face again. Um, is there anything you want to do before we move on to your further travels? You're going to want to search its den, aren't you? Uh, I, it's probably not in there, right? Probably. You're there the there expert, might be some right? acid sacks or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That, though, or some eggs. No, that's what I mean. I would. Uh, yeah, I would love to, to see what's in there. Let's be very careful making our way over there so we don't accidentally okay. step in. Yeah, you can kind of. Uh, uh, mm -hmm, what's what's mm -hmm. your survival bonus? Uh, plus four. Is there any uh, residual acid goo? Yeah, uh, you can kind of spot the outlines of the quicksand now. You kind of test it out and figure out where it is. So, uh, what's that? Is there any residual acid goo on either them or on the sand that uh, I could take a sample of? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit. Uh, kind of at this point, there's some some kind of inert um, acid. Cool. Um, so searching its nest, uh, you do find something in there. There aren't any eggs or anything like that, uh, but there's a corpse. Um, looks like a uh, wannabe adventurer um, had traveled through here at some point. Didn't have and rope. And there's kind of a... <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Didn't have rope. <laughs> Did not have rope. Um, it looks like it got taken out by the Ankrav. It's c There's kind of this desiccated body, halfway eaten. Uh, but it looks like it must have spoiled before the Ankrav could, could finish eating uh, the rest of it. Uh, it I will, uh, I will detect magic on it. Out. Okay. Or in the the whole layer, actually. Uh, okay, there's a, you do get a pulse of magic. Um, and on a little further investigation, you kind of find that there's this like beaten up old backpack, uh, kind of still clutched in its, uh, its rigor mortis hand. Um, and searching through there, you find a couple of minor healing potions. Mm. Uh, so there are two minor healing potions, a set of expert quality thieves tools, and 300 silver pieces. Does anyone not have potions? I have a couple. Uh, you don't have any? I we don't. give them to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you have a couple uh, tasty uh, juice boxes. Of mm. <laughs> can anyone use thieves' tools? Uh, I can. There you go. Now you have a so the expert quality tools uh, will give you a plus one uh, item bonus because of their uh, high quality. And then we'll split the cash. I dismiss that, fellow. Sounds good. Yeah, good old mercenary uh, fashion. Um, also realizing I forgot one thing of the introduction that I'll take care of now, since uh, now's as good a time as any. 
So, uh, I forgot to dole out hero points at the start of the session. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody who shows up to a game session gets one hero point. People can also get uh, extra hero points um, for kind of special things they do to you know, feed the group or transport people to the group or uh, you know, somebody who sent an email to get a raised backstories before <laughs> the session or who <laughs> sent in a really cool uh, character history or something like that. Uh, so I am going to uh, give out one hero point to everybody for showing up. Uh, and uh, Adam very kindly brought me a printout of the death and dying rules. Uh, <laughs> because I forgot to bring them, so I'm going to give you an extra one. Yay! Uh, and if, if it'll they help keep you from dying, so you yeah. might protect yourself against the, your own uh, printout of death and yeah. dying. Why, why would you think we might need that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the main use for them? At this point? Uh, so there are three ways you can use these hero points. You can spend one point when you are dying to uh, return yourself to consciousness uh, and to one hit point. Um, and that w you can do that at any time. So even if it's like it's my last uh, chance and I go to dying four, I can say I'm spinning my hero point right now. I'm I'm good. Uh, that's uh, one of the changes in the new death and dying rules is that you become conscious when you spend the hero point for it before you stayed unconscious. So we wanted to be a little more heroic with your hero point. Nice. So now you come back entirely. Uh, the second use for them, uh, if you have two of them, you can spend those both to re-roll and mm -hmm. use the higher roll on any nice. d20 roll. If you have three of them, you can spend all three of them to take an extra action in your turn, uh, yeah. which means if you were a spellcaster, for example, sure. you could cast two two-action spells instead of just one, um, which usually you're not able to do. Uh, yeah, so that's hero points, and Sweet. you can also get more for kind of doing heroic things with them during the game session. So, uh, you've kind of surveyed this area, uh, and you continue uh, kind of exploring along, and as you're going higher up into the mountainside, you come to uh, kind of a, a, a tributary of uh, some of the rivers coming down out of the mountain. And when you are kind of approaching, you see this uh, little small plume of smoke. Um, and it looks like uh, it's coming from a campfire. And as you get closer, you see a couple tents on the side of the river. And if everybody could just pull everything off the map for just a second, I'm going to pull this uh, flip mat off to reveal the one underneath. Thank you. So this is where you have arrived now. Uh, and you're kind of coming from that direction, kind of where Jason's hero point is there. Uh, so you're all that way. A uh, couple notes on this map. Um, this is the um, battlefield flip mat, I believe. Uh, this There is no bridge here. This is all river. Uh, and then there are kind of two uh, little uh, tents. tents there. Or actually pretty big tents <laughs> as far as tents go. Mm -hmm. It's also not quite as green as the map would. Yeah, not quite as green. Uh, Imagination. The trees are much scrubbier. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there are a couple people by the side of the water. something here. Uh, have they spotted us? They uh, don't appear to have spotted you yet. They are gnolls. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Shh. Which certainly, uh, <coughs> all of you kind of having been around this area, you know the basics about gnolls. They're kind of hyena looking people. Um, there are a bunch of kind of factions and tribes in this area um, who are kind of, uh, kind of always at odds with each other. Um, and the only thing they're more at odds with is everybody else. <laughs> and there are a couple of these gnolls kind of at the edge of the water here. Mm -hmm. um, and there's their campfire back here kind of burning behind them. I'll go ahead and put that on the map. Uh, it looks like it's actually uh, maybe out and it's just kind of the residual smoke of like the last few embers in that fire. Um, but they are... Uh, hanging out with these sticks that look like they're kind of impromptu fishing poles. Um, they're just hungry. Better they eat fish than us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's there's one thing you know about gnolls, it's that um, like they're not really known for fishing. They're more like killing living things yeah. in a fight and eating the, the fresh red meat. 
Yeah. Um, fish, so fish don't scream for mercy. And, so. yeah, they don't. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> they, they don't look super happy to be fishing. Like they hunched over, just like dejected. Uh, they're kind of chattering to each other. Uh, I really don't think we should discourage this peaceful behavior on the part of the gnolls. <laughs> Uh, they're already discouraged. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not happy about the situation. Um, so, and this one is kind of sitting here fishing. This one just chucks its fishing pole in the water. It just kind of starts wandering around. It looks like it's upset. It's like kicking rocks and, <laughs> and dirt. And <laughs> like poor things. Yeah, I feel bad for these guys. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, it's got an axe and just like bashing itself in the head with a hat just to get some type of uh, excitement wow. and action happening here. Um, so, and you know that your path up the mountain. Um, you could go around this camp, but you know it would probably add a couple, uh, several hours onto your journey um, to, to be able to kind of find a proper path, because a lot of kind of the stuff over here is not very, um, not very amenable to travel. So, um, but there's a much faster path kind of if you come through here, but that is across the water and through this knoll camp to mm -hmm. get there. Well, we are adventurers. We're not one to shirk from danger, right? Maybe they're friendly. Especially Maybe I can, yeah, I can talk <laughs> to them. See. I, I'd rather swim through this water than oh. through the sand back there. Maybe we can negotiate. Maybe we can yeah. negotiate a way through. I've got some rations. I can maybe, you know, if they're hungry or something. And yeah. the spirit of Sebagar the Crafty be with you. Maybe they just need some help. What do I know about fishing? gnolls? Uh, what Boy. is your nature bonus? Uh, nature, plus four. Nature or society. Although my bardic lore is plus five. Okay. So, you gnoll know a lot lore. of songs about gnolls. Yeah, gnoll uh, lore. Uh, all right, uh, so you know quite a bit about gnolls. Uh, you know that um, they, uh, they're, they like I said, pretty aggressive, uh, pretty warlike. Um, they, uh, you know, you'd, you'd been in Kelmarine, right? So you'd kind mm -hmm. of seen when they were in charge of the city, they had really just mm -hmm. kind of run it into the crapper. They, um, you know, there are a bunch of tribes. You kind of looking closely at them. Um, you notice that they have a few kind of signature kind of stylistic choices that singles them out to a particular tribe, uh, which is the al Hive tribe. Um, this is a tribe that frequently, um, uh, they really like like insects and arachnids and they often team up with them. Mm. Um, so uh, like the Onkrov you encountered earlier, they yeah. would probably like, but Onkrovs are pretty solitary creatures, otherwise they would maybe be hanging out with them. Um, and you, so you see kind of like they all have this uh, white streak in their hair that's like bleached into it. Mm. Um, and they have necklaces made of like scorpion carapaces. Mm. So uh, that's kind of like some of, the, some of the things you can kind of see from this distance. You uh, can tell that they're members of that tribe. So we can see the two of them on that end of the bridge, and we can see the two tents uh, behind. No bridge. Oh, sorry. All water. Yeah. If there were a bridge, though, that's where it would be. Yeah. We can <laughs> see them on the other side of the river, and we can see the tents behind them. Mm -hmm. um, do the tents seem like more tent than two knolls need? Uh, yeah, that is a lot of tent for two knolls. But we don't see any, any other knolls back there. Uh, but uh, I'll give you a perception check, because okay. you're kind of assessing this. Uh, to see if you notice anything more. Um, so you're looking over there, uh, you don't see, like you think if there are some other gnolls around, they would probably be a little more boisterous or you'd hear their snoring mm -hmm. um, or something like that. Uh, so you don't see any other gnolls, but you do see um, mm. there's kind of just enough, it's getting a little later in the day and the, the sun is kind of, uh, Stringing in from this direction, so you see a little bit of a shadow on the side of the tent um, that looks like a big creature, um, like about the size of the Oncrive you encountered earlier, um, and kind of a, a, a form inside um, this tent here. Hmm. So they have a they have something big with them hidden in the hmm. tent. Some sort of bug, probably. probably. Some sort of bug, giant spider, giant hmm. scorpion. Ramona, you want to talk to them? Sure. What kind of, um, what angle should we take? Maybe. Should I try to bully our way through? Lie? We could flatter their tribe, since you know what the tribe it is. We could invoke their tribe and say, hey, we've heard about you, and we found an ancrab back there. We thought that it might have been yours. Yeah. Maybe you could go. Yeah, you know, yeah, that might work. Maybe if we act really impressed by their giant bug, they'll be okay with letting <laughs> us through. Yeah. 
<laughs> what was the name of the tribe again? The Alcar Hive. Alcar Hive? Mm -hmm. Like hive as an in insect hive? No. No, okay. Like C H O C H O R H I I V. Okay. Alcar Hive. Alcar Hive. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, from across the river, I'll be like, Hail, members of the Alcarive tribe. May we pass through. We've heard great things about you and encountered an Ankrev a while, a uh, little ways back that you might be interested to go inspect their burrow for eggs, perhaps. This sounds a little complicated for them. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds uh, a little complicated for yeah. me. <laughs> so you speak Noel, correct? Yes. Uh, so uh, this one who's like kind of been wandering around looks at the other one and uh, says something like, <laughs> uh, so you can tell that it said uh, that fleshing said Alcor Hive and a bunch of other crap I did not understand. <laughs> hey, so and then sounds like <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tell me, uh, yeah, we need to go over there. And you guys are a big tribe here. All right. Uh, <laughs> kind of says, <laughs> uh, and the other one kind of. Like, <laughs> the <laughs> subtitles. We need so subtitles. <laughs> and and they're, they're saying, like, they, they want to get through here. Uh, and I think they're trying to flatter us. Um, <laughs> and the other one says, uh, let's, let's get them get close and see what they're willing to give us. Uh, I think we're gonna need to bribe our way through this. Well, we just got three hundred silver pieces off of a dead Ankrev. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, you guys like money? <laughs> <laughs> money. <laughs> They're trying to whisper. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do a knoll. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Uh, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if you can make out what they're saying. I got pretty cute senses. Uh, no. Uh, so no. they kind of yeah. whisper something, and then it kind of says, <laughs> "How much money?" Uh, one hundred silver. Uh, we got one hundred silver. And <laughs> 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 yeah, we like money. Uh, okay, uh, how are we going to get this across to right. them? So well, we're going to count it out. River. Hmm? Count it out. So I count out 100 silver. Okay. And are we crossing the river like over here? Is there a place that looks... Yeah, uh, can that, I that where Jason's pointing there is the narrowest. Mm -hmm. um, is it any shallower anywhere? Uh, no, it's the whole river is kind of um, uh, is kind of passing down this way. So uh, there's, a, there's a fairly decent current. Okay. Um, what are the rules so for jumping? I have powerful leap. I'm yeah. trying to see if I can clear the ah. river. So it's uh, two actions to jump. So you stride and uh, to get enough of a head start, and then you make a long jump. Uh, you can also leap, which will take you like 10 feet, but that's not far enough to cross this river unless you just want to jump into the middle of it. You can kind of do that automatically. But yeah, you'll, you'll, uh, make a, you'll move 10 feet to get your running start, and then you'll leap. Um, and the DC is... Uh, it's a little higher than it was in Pathfinder 1 um, to be a little more realistic. So uh, let me check the exact numbers on that. Well, before I do this, I should probably hold one end of the rope. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good call. In case I go into the water. Through. So <laughs> I'll, I'll tie the rope around my waist and then try to powerful leap across. Do you have the, the coins uh, with you? Yes, I do. So I believe that's uh, 25, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so it'd be DC 25. So oh, it's oof. 5 oof. plus the that's distance. But the, but the powerful leap will add 5, I think. Okay. I, if I All right. So then you just need a DC 20 to still though. That's pretty high. Yep. All right. Well, wish me luck, guys. Good luck. Uh, yeah, 17 plus my athletics of three exactly. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So <laughs> he totters okay, on the so edge, <laughs> but you know, seven guard, <laughs> the <laughs> agile, uh, right. saves me, and uh, I reach the end. Okay. Hmm. Cool. All right, so you're across there. You've got the the hundred silver pieces. So just to be clear, we sent one of us over there holding all the money. Well, I'm going to hold the rope while the others come across. Okay, just make sure. I, I, I got a pretty good jump on me too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when, do you want to go next? I would, uh, yeah, okay. I would love to jump across. I got a quick jump, so I don't need the running start, but I could take it. And then I'm going to also try and leap across here. Okay. 
Is it DC 25? Or 25. Long jump across. But can we... Um, I can't. Uh, is there any way? Can, can they instead? Can we? Can we just rig up like a rope bridge yeah. and have the have the not so strong uh, people get across? Rope that bridge way? is. You could do like a. Um, you, you can't really like rig up a bridge, right. but you can kind of do yeah. a, a system. That's what can yeah. kind of yeah form like a tug of looking line and. Uh, that's my thought. Across. Can I? Can we do that? Or I could swim with them. Across with that. Well, however, you want to do it. Possibly. Uh, you might be able to jump it, but I'm thinking of the people. Yeah, that they're I can't well. jump it, but I can probably swim it. Swim so. It? Okay. Is uh, does jumping or long jumping is that affected by your uh, move speed at all? Uh, no. Okay. Um. See if you can get over here to me. Okay. Uh, I also have. I should have left this behind, but I also have a leaper's elixir. Yeah. Which I could give to. I don't you think we you. need to for this. If we had something over here that we could just tie the rope to, and then you take it over to the well, other there's side. There's a big of the boulder river. here. Yeah. Yeah. Then you could probably tie it around that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's just do that then. And do then you we want, can do just you want to cross work our way kind of across that, or do you want to? Uh, do you guys need me to take the rope at all? Yeah, I don't like. I don't there? like these knolls over here with me on the only, the only one on the side. So yeah, if you want to come over. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll just come on over then. All right. Uh, try it there. I rolled a one. Okay, <laughs> so you uh, run toward the edge, you jump. Um, let me see what happens on critical failure. I swear I'm good at this stuff. That. It always works great in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the parkour uh, is failing me. Uh, you uh, jump ten feet and then fall splash into the water. Um, and you're kind of off balance and flailing. And that's when the gnolls say, Ha! It worked! Uh, and we're going to roll initiative. Oh, fine. I meant um, to do that! They're going to roll deception for their initiative. Uh, which they're not particularly good at. Uh, they're actually really bad at. So, uh, as they kind of scramble to get out their, uh, their weapons, um, they're making it pretty obvious that they're about to attack. Those are bad at deception because if you look at their tails, you know exactly <laughs> what they're thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as their tails are uh, wagging, you're good. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> then everybody else is going to be rolling perception, so All go right. ahead and give me those numbers as soon as you have them. Uh, 16. 16 for Fenra. Got a 13. 16 and flailing. 13 for Ramona. Sebagar. I also have a 13. All right. And Marion. I have an 11. Okay. Uh, Fenra, you are in the water. Um, you're a little off balance from kind of that, that, um, it was more, it was kind of a jump, kind of a trip, yeah. kind of in between <laughs> those two. Um, a trip so with momentum. So yeah. you're going to be making an athletics check, uh, but you're going to have a minus two circumstance penalty on it okay. because of uh, that, um, that challenge. Uh... So, uh, 24. 24, all right. So you are good at this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after I failed the first time. Yeah. You're just testing it's all, things it's out. All good. Yeah. Yeah. You're just giving yourself an uh, opportunity so to shot. Uh, is, it, is, <laughs> it, uh, is the 24 with the minus two? It is with the minus okay. two. Uh, all right, so uh, you are able to swim uh, forward and kind of right yourself, so you're not going to be taking that minus two anymore either. Okay. Um, the distance that you can move, uh, you you succeeded but not, did not critically succeed. Um, so you are going to be able to move, uh, what's your speed? Uh, on land, 25. 25. Uh, you're going to be able to move 10 feet. Oh, okay. That puts her ashore. That's enough, yeah. All right. So you make it up onto the shore. <gasps> uh, so do swim with, with one action. So now you still have two actions left. Uh, nice. The gnolls look like they're kind of fumbling with their stuff trying to draw their bows. Uh, and I still got two actions. Yep. Um, but you don't have a weapon out. No. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw it and just enter my rage. Okay. Sweet. All right. You are angry. Uh, okay. And now they go. Um, they both I kind look of a lot more like pull out now. their... <laughs> they pull out their bows. Um, Do you shake all over to get the water <laughs> <off>? <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, they have short bows. They pull those out. Um, and they start shooting at Sebagar. Sure. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Ooh. Um, <laughs> it doesn't help. No, that is fine. a 25. Hits. And a... Oh, sorry. sorry. A 26, rather. Um, and a 27. Both hit. And no, no, neither of those is a crit, correct? No, sir. All right. Where are my dice? I'm assuming you don't have any resistances, so I'll just give you the total. You take a total of eight piercing damage. Okay. Uh, and we haven't healed since the fight with the... Uh, no. uh, and they're going to shoot again. Um, Do they have to reload bows? I forget how it works. Uh, no, it's uh, just oh. one action to, to try and shoot. You have to reload crossbows. Uh, one of them definitely missed. The other got a 18. Missed. All right. So the two more arrows come flying past you. Uh, and the gnolls, uh, they, they, at this point, they start kind of... <laughs> uh, so it looks like they're enjoying finally being uh, able to shed blood. Ramona and Sebagar, who wants to go first between you? All right. All right, Ramona. I'm going to move twice and then... Well, no, hold on. <coughs> you can shout encouragement from the other side of the river. <laughs> it's true. Do you have any effect that can reach him? Or that what you're um, actually, here's what I'll do. I will get my bow out mm. just to be ready for that. Um, and then I'll inspire courage for everybody. Nice. Okay. Um, 60 foot aura, we're within that. So... And then I'll give you all a little extra movement. Um, also, for one round, you're accelerated 10. Ooh. Right. Nice. nice. So that will accelerate 10 as a condition that will add 10 feet to your movement speed. Yep. Any uh, movement speed? Say, hypothetically, including swimming? Mm. Uh, unless it says otherwise, it's all Yeah, it just says accelerated okay. 10. So well, uh, which seems you have like to, a good time to... Um, it will mean... So if you don't have a swim speed, mm -hmm. it's not going to increase it by 10. But increasing your base speed uh, might make you fast enough. I think you have to have 60 feet to move really fast in water, though. I see. Um, so it probably won't be enough to help in uh, in this particular instance. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, that was all your actions yep. for Ramona. So, Sebagar, you're up. I will cast Magic Weapon on your Greatsword with two actions. Okay. And Shield. All right. Your Shield. Oh, no, I take that back. Draw my right here. Okay. Rick, so what, what will magic? Uh, that is going to give you. Uh, what type of weapon do you have? Is it expert quality? No. Okay. Uh, then it's going to give you plus one to hit, and it's got an add an extra die of damage. Okay. Uh, to all your attacks, um, Marion. Well, I'm going to have to do this sooner or later, so <laughs> might as well be now. Um, I'm going to jump, try to jump across the river. All right. And fully expect to land smack in the middle of it, but that's how this works out. So how right. far back do I have to run? Uh, you're good a running from start? where you are. Okay. So you can get, uh, you need a 10-foot running start, so you do that and you jump. Okay. And well, that is an athletics check. It is. 17. 17. Uh, that is going to get you... Three squares. Yeah. Four. Is that right? That's right. One, two, three. Puts them here. Okay. That's not too bad. Can you grab the ledge or something? Is there like a rule like that? Uh... I mean, not, not in, in this water, particular but. case, no. Um, so that is, how many actions is that? Uh, that's two actions. That so two actions? you have one action left, you can climb up onto the shore there. Okay, cool. That actually got me further than I was expecting to go. <laughs> so it's half orc. Mighty yeah. fuse. Clear. Yeah, orcs are known for their swimming ability. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, everybody's heard of that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, smell okay. like a wet dog. Uh, Fenra, <laughs> you're as, as you are angry. Oh, oh, I'm here. sorry, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse you. Yeah, it's your turn. You're you're already raging. I smell yep. like a moan. Um, I'm gonna charge up to him, and uh, if you could help me, this is move there. this is you. Yep. Five, I'm do ten, sudden charge. fifteen, twenty. So I can move up to fifty on yeah, a sudden charge. Be oh, there I'll you be. Done. Yeah, I got it. And uh, yeah, take a whack at with my newly improved great sword. All right. Go ahead and give me that attack roll. Yeah, that's also a terrible roll again. But uh, that'll be... Uh, Inspire Courage and Magic Weapon. Yep. 13, then. 13 <laughs> is not going to be enough. Yeah. So, you'll get that. Uh, and then I can take one more attack, I think, you at can. the minus 5. So that's let's right. try that. Uh, that's probably not going to do it. That's... Uh, that's right around 13. Yeah, yeah that is yeah. nice. Okay. 
uh, it's their turn. So um, the one next to you, um, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> drops its bow uh, and pulls out a uh, battle axe and swings it at you. Actually, it doesn't have to drop its bow. It's just holding it in its other hand while it swings its battle axe. Uh, it badly misses. It's clearly, you know, uh, a little bit uh, hungry and out of practice with battle, so it just kind of swings wide uh, and <laughs> decides it's worth trying again, right? Uh, and tries to hit you on the backswing. Oh. Um, that is a uh, 21. Uh, that hits. All right. Um, and it kind of clacks its jaws at you. Uh, which, you know, in other circumstances it would be friendly, but not right now. Eight slashing damage. All right. Uh, and it also um, it doesn't need to spend an action to do this. It, it whistles, which I'm not going to do into a microphone, <laughs> but it, it, it emits a, a loud whistling sound, and you see some kind of rustling in that tent over there. Uh, uh, the spider whistle. We knew that was coming. Do we have a, a bet here? Spider versus scorpion versus something else? I'm going to go... Hmm, that's How a do we call. know it's an insect? I thought it would be like a dog thing like them. Don't they like, like bugs, us? though? Yeah, this, this tribe likes, likes uh, insects likes and poisonous things. Okay. Uh, Alright, Ramona, you're up. Um, I should probably try to get closer to you guys. You can just fight from the other side if you, have, if you can. And then we'll pull you over yeah. when it's over. It's true. It us. You're better at range anyway. Yeah, you've got a bow, and uh, as long as we can hear you, you can continue to make us feel great about how we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just kind of run up the shore. It's like, keep going, guys. Y'all are doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm still key. I'm going to, once again, for the next round, do Inspire Courage, so plus one attack and damage, mm -hmm. and then um, Accelerated 10. All right. Okay. Is that two actions? Because you move? That's two separate, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. So move and then Kay. triple time and cool. inspire. So yeah. that, that's all three of them? Yep. Sebagar. Uh, it looks like... I'm not sure if I can reach this guy with 30 feet or not. Uh, let me 30 feet is like no, this, but he's on the diagonal, so yeah, it might be just, about, just out of range. Um, At least you can't certainly can't reach any square you could stand in there. I'm sorry? Yeah, uh, you won't be able to get to him. You but know, I can move an extra ten. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, well, I, I had a spell that I was going to use. And he's so you're at forty. I am twenty-five plus ten is thirty-five. Oh, thirty-five. Okay. Um. Then let's. Yeah, you could get next one. Oh, I don't. I don't need to. I, I was going to use some. I was going to use reach shocking grasp on gotcha. him, but he's out of range. Yeah. So okay. I can't do that. So instead, I, I will move to there. If I do this right, and I, oh, one more, and I'm gonna burning hands both of them. Okay. Nice. Uh, what is the save DC for that? Uh, I guess 18, same as my others. Yep. Does it go by change by level now? Does it? Do you add the spell level? <coughs> uh, you, don't, you don't. It, it's the same for all your Yeah. Spells. Okay. 18. Yeah. Then. This spell uh, okay. Um, one of them uh, succeeds, and the other, but it does not critically succeed. And the other uh, exactly succeeds. Oh, so they save. Right. So I, I guess they take, they take half. half. So how much is that? Let me make sure that I got that right. Yeah, they take half. So nine halved. Okay, so they each take four. All right. Smell of singed hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not super appetizing. Uh, Marion. Hmm. I mean, maybe actually, there's both of you might find the smell of singed hair pretty good. It's all right. <laughs> Certainly not your first time smelling singed hair. There's what dog with singed hair here? It's right at yeah. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Reminds you of your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Chase this wizard up a pine tree. <laughs> um, <laughs> good times. <laughs> Just sit there and bark and bark. So I can get over there in two moves. I mean, never um, came down. It was so weird. <laughs> And uh, then I will chuck an acid flask at that guy. Sweet. Are you adjacent to him? Um, if that was two moves, uh, you also need to draw your your items. Oh, 
So that's probably going to be your, your last section is to get those ready for next time. Okay. Got it. And, and before Fenrir can go. Here we go. This. Money yeah, on Scorpion. Here's to well, all right. the, the opening hey buddy. of this yeah. tent. Uh, and a big old scorpion pops out, uh, kind of clicking around, snapping its pincers, uh, waving its tail. It's so cute. And it is going to come say hello. <laughs> at least it's not going to spit at you, though. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is true. It's got poison instead. Yeah. It yeah. is nice and fast. So. Here it comes. Wow. Let me see if it has a reach. Nope. So yeah, it's going to get need to come get next to you. Yes. Um, and it tries to, uh, I think it's going to start by uh, trying to snag you with one of its pincers. Mm, but it probably will not. That is a 16. 22. Uh, and then it, with its last action, it tries to sting you with its big old stinger. And that's where the bite comes. Uh, but that is only a thirteen. I am agile. All right. Sebagar is swift. Fails fails to uh, get any hits on Sebagar. Fenra, you're up. All right. Uh, got my last round of rage, so I'm gonna I'm gonna swing with the great sword. Okay. Start off. Uh, that'll be 22. All right, that is a hit. Great. Uh, and I get two die now of this? You do. So that, okay, so that'll be six plus 10. Uh, so 16 plus 22 damage. All right. Okay, so uh, you swing your sword and take a uh, big slash across this knoll's midsection. It's, uh, you know, trinkets of scorpion tails and stuff go flying into the water. Uh, and it, it looks mad and also excited. Uh, it's just really weird knoll, you know, knoll excitement. It's like, yay, battle. I don't understand I'm these guys. To fight. I'm losing, but it's still great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at least I'm not fishing. <laughs> right. Two more actions. Exactly. Yep, uh, I'll go ahead and swing again. A bad day and fighting is, is better a than a good day fishing. Yeah. 23. Nice. That is a hit. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Uh, 11 plus 4, 15 plus uh, 6, 21 awesome. there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that soup, uh, takes the knoll's life and its body goes kind of flopping into the river and floats away down south. All right. Now he died doing what he loved. And final <laughs> action, <laughs> I'll come in. Dying. Yeah. Step up here with my friends. <laughs> All right. Getting rage. And this was the last round of your rage, so next round yep. you're going to be fatigued. All right. Uh, it is now the remaining knoll's turn. Um. Which one whistled for the scorpion? Uh, the one that just died. Oh. Uh, so that knoll uh, is going to fire some arrows at you because it doesn't think getting next to you is a good idea. What? And it still still has What kind of knoll is this? Well, you know, it doesn't have to show off for its friends now that it's <laughs> dead. <laughs> the scorpion's so, uh, still here. It's an 18. Um... Let's see here. Did we get what was giving an AC bonus earlier? Was that your um, thing? That was a that was another cantrip from a different. Oh, from thing. a different. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have that. So yep. eighteen is exactly what it needs. All right. Uh, so that uh, shot from the short bow is going to do five damage to you. Uh, it takes another shot, uh, and that one is also going to hit. For one damage, um, and then it uh, draws its battle axe in preparation for getting into melee because it has a feeling that it's going to have to um, one way or another pretty soon. And Ramona, I'm going to take two strides to get <laughs> over here. Hi, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> like, I also need to keep them in a certain range. So, um, and then my last action, I'm going to do inspire courage. So, all right. 
keeping them courageous. Yeah. Sebagar. Kill that big bug. Sebagar is <laughs> going doing to great. <laughs> uh, use one action to shield. Okay. Use another action to dueling parry. All right. And use his third action to attack with his rapier. Okay. Uh, will you give uh, me and the audience at home a reminder of what dueling parry does? Uh, it means I use one action and it gives me a plus two circumstantial bonus to AC. Okay. Ooh, nice. Right. Uh, uh, that's actually that won't stack with your shield, so you might want to skip the I shield if you're doing that. Oh, it's a different. Yeah, they're both. Uh, a shield gives a circumstance bonus. Oh, I. Uh, so. I thought they were different circumstances, so they stacked. Okay. okay. If uh, then I will. Um, then I will dueling parry and attack with my rapier. Um, which is I'm gonna miss. Okay. It was twenty, and then <laughs> and then um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I guess I could just attack again, but um, I will draw my wand of magic missiles. Okay. All right. So you have your wand out, and uh, Marion, it is your turn. Well, the no that I was going to throw that acid flask at is dead. But uh, now right. there's a big bug here. So. And it has a hole <laughs> right next to it. Um, it sure does. Easily splashable. Um, unfortunately, so is he. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you know. Uh, it's big. You can get both of them without getting us, can't you? Um, I could. I know you sure. don't want to. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's less data, but sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, fine. I guess I'll shoot for the. B I'll aim for the back of the scorpion. Okay. Um, all right, let's do this. Aiming for the back left legs. Uh oh, looks like all we might get here is splash. Um, seven plus seven is fourteen. All right, that is going to be a miss. So sp just splash damage to the scorpion. How much is that? That is four. Four, a very respectable amount of splash damage. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. I took that right. splash that specialization fire. feat, that, which that was, is that was acid fire. damage. Acid. All right, so it is is burning and kind of smoking. Now you know what burning hair smells like and what smoking a uh, carapace smells like. Liquefying so nice scorpions. combination. Yeah. Um, did you have... Take uh, notes. Was that your first action? Uh, it was, so I guess I could draw another acid yeah. flask and throw I, it. I believe you have... Did you... Uh, I do have quick alchemy also. Okay, um, yeah. But that would be if I didn't already have one on me, which I do. Um, so yeah, I, w I guess I'll draw another one and throw that one. All right. Uh, same same destination. Yep. Right. Just with a negative five, so, which is the exact same roll with the negative five. So uh, that would be another uh, splash for acid. Okay. Zer, was your first attack roll fourteen? Uh, no, first attack. Oh yes, it was. Uh, I was I was incorrect. So we're going to say this one was your second one. Your first one actually hit because it's against TAC. Oh, okay. So uh, mm -hmm. go ahead and roll the damage. Uh, we're just going to flip them chronologically here. Well, the total numbers, once I factored in the penalties, were the same on both. So if the first okay. one hit, then the second one right. also hit. And also I had a bonus from the right. courage thing, which I forgot about. Um, all right. I don't believe an acid flask does any damage right up front, but he is suffering from five persistent acid. All right. So he will take the four splash, though, uh, from each of them. And another seven persistent okay. acid. Uh, it's going to be, so he's going to be 2d4. So you don't roll that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm going to mark down the 2d4 on the creature. Mm -hmm. So um, it will roll that in each turn. And those those aren't cumulative? Well, it would have been total 2d4 if I because I hit him twice. Oh, uh, so it's 1d4? No, it's 2d4 for one of them. Okay. And then it's 2d4 for the second one, too. Uh, those because it's those an empowered add together flask. because they're uh, persistent damage. Oh, okay. So you're going to have it's going to have two d four persistent damage. But if you want to throw the other one at the null instead, you could try to get them both. Go. Okay, yeah, uh, I should do that. Burning with acid. Okay, so hitting uh, since acid flasks only do persistent damage, there's no benefit to hitting as the same target with more than one of them, N except for the splash damage. Okay. So if you just want to do four, but I can get the splash damage by uh, hitting the null <laughs> too. So I'll yeah. do that. Uh, all right. Uh, do you think with the bonuses you can get to a 17? Uh, no, I okay. cannot. Uh, then that one's going to miss, but they are both going to take the splash damage. Okay, so that's another four acid to the scorpion right. and to the gnoll. Okay. Uh, we are back to the scorpion. Uh, and it is going to continue on the Sepagar uh, attempted beatdown train. Very good. 
So it's going to try to catch you with a pincer. And it's going to miss with an 18, I believe. Yes. Um, pincer mark two is pretty bad. Um, and then it decides that this is not prey. This must be something else. Uh, so it kind of walks around uh, and is going to kind of try to get around the back here. Uh, and it looks like it's it's Ooh. exactly like that. It's it's <laughs> kind of coming, <laughs> coming, <laughs> in the coming in for a hug. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a violence hug. Mm -hmm. Fenra. Uh, huh, I'm looking a lot more human <laughs> and a lot more tired. All right. So you have the fatigued condition. Two. I've got some reminder cards here, so I will pass you that one. Uh, so that means Fenra is going to be taking a minus one. Um, to AC and saves, so her defenses basically. And each action that she takes is going to uh, make her fatigue more acute, increasing that penalty by one for the round. So, yep. but you're only going to be fatigued for one round because that's how rage works. Nice. So what do you want to do with your round of, uh, of unhappiness? Uh, I'm still gonna, I'm gonna try and power through. Okay. But, and <laughs> go for this guy who's trying to shoot me over here. All right, so you get up to that null. So hit that null, and so that's my stride. So that's, that's hurting my two. hurting my fatigue, and then I'm gonna try and hit him with the great sword. Okay. Um, which should hit at twenty seven. That is a hit. Um, is that with the bonus from uh, Inspire Courage? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. All right. And. Uh, Six plus three plus four, so thirteen. All right. Uh, he looks pretty badly injured now. Uh, do you want to use your last action? No, I'm just gonna hunker down and okay. Wait, see what he's and doing. And have some defense left yep. after. Uh, what he's doing is uh, kind of. He's not so much cackling out loud anymore. He's kind of cackling under his breath. <laughs> Uh, it seems a little, a little bit annoyed at how things are going, uh, but he is, uh, he is a knoll. He is going to try to hit you with a battle axe. Um, also, because retreating seems like um, he's a little bit outnumbered here, so he's going to at least go for a glorious death. Um, an eighteen does that hit you with your minus two from the fatigue? It sure does. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Either I die here. Uh, only six damage. Uh, his second attack is a miss. Um, and then uh, he said he, he kind of grumbles something um, that you recognize as uh, I'll help Simon and uh, goes over here uh, to provide a flank with the scorpion. Has a name? It, it does. So cute. Yeah, we can't <laughs> kill him now. The name sounds <laughs> the name sounds way different in Noel, but it's basically it's, it's <laughs> everything in Noel sounds like <laughs> uh, somebody choking on a bone. Um, I'm going to there. do inspire courage again, mm. but I'm going to use something I've kept forgetting about the lingering composition. Um, so I have to do a perform check, and it says DC is usually a high difficulty DC of a level equal to the highest level target of your composition. Okay. Uh, and I assume you're trying to help your allies, <coughs> so that'll yeah. be level four. So go ahead and roll that. Uh, my performance is a total of 21. 21? Yep. All right. Uh, that is a success. Awesome. Uh, All right. I'm just going to tell you the DC for the purposes of this stream is 19. OK. Um, and then I'm going to, how difficult that, That's going to mean your, uh, for the audience, that's going to mean that your bardic performance is going to last longer. You won't have to oh, spend right. an action on it. Mm. Um, so how difficult does it look like swimming across would be? Um, it looks like, like it, it super would be fast, or is it just like, uh, OK, I've got to be at least kind of good at swimming? You think if you didn't get super far, you would start drifting slowly that way, but not you wouldn't be like rushed away. OK, well, I'm going to go ahead and spend my last two actions to try to swim across. OK. Um, there's my first athletics check is a 20. All right. And, and you're going to be able to move 10 feet. All right. So nice. And then my second one was uh, 18. 18? Uh, 10 more feet. All right. 10. 
Right, so you're getting That's close. It. Uh, then at the end of your turn, you get drifted Moved. about to there. Okay. Uh, the, just kind of along the current of the water. Right. All right, Sebagar. So is using a wand um, uh, like a manipulate action? Uh, it uses whatever the spell casting actions are. Oh, okay. Of the spell. So, yeah. Uh, usually that's going to include a somatic, so it will be a manipulate. Right, okay. Um, is the Noel wearing metal armor? Um, it is. Let me, let me check its stat block. Uh, it's leather armor, so, so there, no. there are bits of armor, but not not enough for shocking grasp to do its enhanced it's effect. Okay. All right, um, I'll uh, I'll step with one action, okay. and then two actions to magic missile it. All right, uh, how much damage is it going to take? That's two die four plus two, right? Is that right? Uh, yes. Um, only three, four, five, six. Only six. All right. All right, so bolts of force unerringly strike this knoll. Uh, it kind of says, <laughs> which you recognize as, what the hell was that? <laughs> it doesn't seem like it has encountered a magic missile before. Is Marian. that a resonance point to do that? Uh, yes. To activate an item. I, uh, I don't love standing right in front of this scorpion. Mm -hmm. um, so Please I... Open. I am going to uh, take one action to move over here by this tent. Okay. You will. Hold tight. <laughs> Duck in a claw. All right. Just uh, getting out of the way here. <laughs> and um, me, so that was one action. Um, I am fresh out of acid and fire. But I still have liquid ice, or as I like to call it, water. <laughs> 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 no, it's <laughs> it's called liquid ice. But um, and I will uh, use one action to pull out one of those and throw that at the scorpion. All right. Um, and let's see. That is the same attack bonus. And just terrible. Uh, Twelve. Uh, oh wait, 12. thirteen because of the thing. Uh, thirteen is still just barely a miss. Ah. Oh. Well, it does four cold damage. All right. Burr. Um, and actually, I'm reminded I forgot to do its uh, persistent damage on its turn. So let me see. Oh, it actually managed to de-acidify itself. Yeah. Uh, looks like the its carapace was just tough enough the acid couldn't fully penetrate. Uh, OK. Uh, I think that was all your actions, Marion. Mm -hmm. So it is the scorpion's turn. Uh, it was informed that it was supposed to be teaming up with this knoll. It is no longer able to team up against you, but it still can go toward you. It kind of steps around the bonfire, uh, comes over your direction, and tries to hit you with a pincer. That is a 20. Uh, that will do it. All right. So. That gives me, uh, the courage gives me a bonus to AC, right? No. Okay. Attack and damage and saves against fear. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, you take eight slashing damage. All right. And then it grabs you in its pincer. So you are now grabbed by it. Well, I do not care for that. And I am going to give you a card for you to track your grabbing. So that is that. Grabbing. Okay. Uh, Fenra, you are now up and you are no longer fatigued. And I am, I'm going to enter rage because I hate that that thing has my friend. Okay. <coughs> and uh, release a howl. Yeah, and that's, that makes me feel that? pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Not my pack me. And. Okay. Um, as you approach over? it, mm -hmm. you kind of come up close to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like it was prepared for you, and its stinger oh, no. swipes Oof. out at you um, as you approach. Uh, that is a 21. That'll hit. You take 
Uh, seven piercing damage, and you need to give me a fortitude save as venom is injected uh, into your uh, deltoid. Uh, why always the threes? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. We have. Is there anything else giving us bonuses right now? I'm not missing anything. Not to okay. That. Then um, that will be uh, eleven. Eleven is a failure. Okay. So you, you feel this um, uh, this scorpion venom um, weakening you. You take two poison damage. And you are enfeebled one, which is going to be bad for your attack and damage rolls. Oh. The value of that is one, so that would be your penalty. But now you can continue with your remaining two actions. All right, yep, I'll go ahead and use my super special great sword. Uh, so with a minus one, that'll be 26. That is a hit. And we still have Inspire Courage too, right? Yeah. Yep. Slotting that. Uh, oh, that's a nine plus the nine. Uh, yep. 18 plus six, 24. All right. Okay. Uh, it, it looks very badly injured, and it's kind of. Um, You've sheared off uh, one of its pincers entirely and uh, taken out a few of its eyes, and it's just kind of uh, looking um, desperate. Uh -oh. Poor Simon. <laughs> I feel no uh, I think I still got one more yeah. action, so. <laughs> uh, oh, 19's a decent roll. Um, yeah. Plus uh, 4, so 23. Okay, that's a hit. And I tried to roll my. Very sad one at the same time, though. <laughs> um, plus six, though, so seven. All right, and then your other uh, D12? Oh, that's right. Oh, which is a 12, so oh, okay. 13 <laughs> plus. Uh, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> you were grabbed by the scorpion, and now you are uh, just have a <laughs> claw around you that is no longer attached to anything as the scorpion nice. all right. is <laughs> slain. <laughs> All right. That was for you. Uh, yeah, you are free. You. There's still one knoll uh, kind of hanging out there and looking a <laughs> little uh, uh, resigned to its fate at this point. Sebagar, do you want to help put it out of its misery? I, I will do my best. Okay. Uh, so I'll step up. Or do uh, you want the 100 silver now? <laughs> <laughs> Dueling parry. Oh, it's still 100. That's yeah. a pretty good deal. Yeah. If well. it knew common, it would be. And I attack it with my <laughs> right Um I don't think I hit. I only got a, a 16. Uh, that is not a hit. Yep. Sorry. Keeping it busy for y'all. Alright. <laughs> Marion. Um, so, uh, the poison, if, uh, it, it'll just wear off in a fairly short period of time. Um, the poison that Fenrir has? Right. Um, it will, but it might, um, continue to do damage her, to her. And, um, it is probably fairly fast acting, so it probably doesn't last, uh, very long. Mm -hmm. But it, it could still be harmful. Well, sure. I guess he, <laughs> I guess seeing as he just <laughs> saved me from being cut in half by that giant bug, I can spare some antidote for you. So it takes two actions to dig something out of my backpack, right? Yeah. Okay. I will uh, slide my backpack off, open it up, um, pull out a flask, slide it into Erlenmeyer, the animated... Uh, flask okay. holder, yep. <laughs> and send him scuttling over <laughs> to the ground. So your your animated familiar oh. kind of trundles over, and there's a, a nice handy uh, antidote there sitting for, sitting for you to pick up. Nice. Uh, and all right, that one's dead. Fenra, you're up. Uh, Fenra has no concept of a moving thing not actually being alive, so she's gonna, she's gonna pat it on the head mm -hmm. as a thanks, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, Pick up that. Uh, it doesn't feel and, anything. And, and it does too. Cringe because he needs medicine, that. but <laughs> down it because okay. it feels make it much better. All right, and what does that antidote do? Um, it. Let me look up really quickly what antidote does. I assume it cures poison. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you just make me drink? <laughs> oh boy! Uh, <laughs> you had a chance. You could yeah. have given her anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I know that you'll drink anything. Else. Just tell her it's an antidote. <laughs> so uh, you gain a plus two item to fortitude saves against poisons and venoms for six hours. So all the subsequent okay. saves that you make okay. on the next few rounds, you get a plus two on. Okay. All 
right. Okay, so you have drunk that. Uh, you still have an action left. Uh, then I will go ahead and just move over here. All right. Unified front. And you have moved up there. I uh, just need to check one thing right quick okay. on the uh, the poison. So, all right. Um, it is right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have you make your fortitude save for that now. Sure. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Is that with a plus two? No, sorry, excuse me, the right. uh, 18. Okay, then you have recovered from the poison. Woohoo! Cool. Yeah, it works. You are unpoisoned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the best. Um, the remaining knoll. Uh, figures it has one chance to get some glory. It jumps into the water. <laughs> oh, <wow>. And <laughs> starts trying to bite you. Oh. Uh, someone will just move it over there next to uh, Ramona. <laughs> so it's just yeah. kind of splashing around. Just Is it <laughs> hyena paddling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's going to be uh, taking a penalty because of uh, not being a particularly skilled aquatic combatant. Um, <laughs> Is anyone really? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's still got a 21, I believe. That'll hit. All right. So he takes fight damage for eight. Ouch. Ramona. Hey, guess what? You made a friend. Yeah. Um. Ramona thinks to herself, I'm never going to go in the water again for the rest <laughs> of my career. <laughs> Tell me a no. I'm, I'm going to. Not a, not a great if it was a yap, I'm going to ignore this yapping thing and uh, okay. just swim to the shore. All right. Or to the best of my ability, that's an eleven. Uh, eleven is not enough. Uh, Do I drift? You, you. Or well, she has uh, more actions yet. At the end of your turn, you will. Okay. You, but you so I'll try that. a second action. That's a whole lot better at 22. Okay, you can get up onto the shore. Uh, mm -hmm. The knoll kind of just like splashes in there and you're like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not going to give you this. Okay. Um, and so that was my second action. Actually, I'll just go ahead and move to assumed safety over there. Okay. All right. Uh, you are safe, we will assume. Sebagar. Sebagar will move up. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the knoll is flat-footed because it's in the water, so okay. it's going to take a penalty to its AC. I'm just going to go over with my rape here. Yeah. Um, Seventeen. That is a hit. Yeah. Uh, for only three. All right. It kind of goes. <coughs> we'll try again. All right. Yeah. So I'm minus five for second attack. Correct. Is that right? We call this the old yeller. Oh, that's good. Um, Eleven, fourteen, fifteen. Uh, that, that is. Uh, is that including <laughs> the bonus? I counted the one for that, okay. but uh, not that as flat footed. <laughs> that is a miss. Okay. Done. Wait, there's a 15? 15. 15. Yeah, yeah. You just barely missed. All right, Marion. Uh, <coughs> well, I think my work here is done. I'm just going to let you guys finish him off. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Marion's going to hang out. Fenra. Uh, my bite is way better than that. <laughs> I'm gonna give that a shot. All right. Okay, so, uh, twenty-five. That is a hit. Uh, is that including the inspire? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, then. That's close to a crit. Yep. Uh, eight plus six. Uh, the. Fourteen. All right, uh, you give it a real good chomping, um, and it is going to expire at this point. What does that look like as your your bite removes it from its earthly existence? Uh, jaws clamp down right around that neck area for that that neck, and then just as it clamps down, just whoosh, and the body is free to go. But that head is mine. <laughs> no, <laughs> 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 All right. she frightens me. 
<laughs> so the body drifts off down uh, slowly, you know, ambling down uh, toward the foot of the mountain. And I'm gonna um, just drop it at someone's feet like a like a ball. All right. <laughs> it's got to be his. <laughs> you want me to throw it for you? Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, you have defeated all the gnolls uh, and cleared out this campsite. You're free to move on. Uh, we're going to take a break here, uh, just kind of take a brief intermission, and we'll be back here in just a few cool. uh, with the continuation of this adventure. Cool.